Hi, I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. Today I'm going to tell you how to speak bee. Uh, well, what I'm going to tell you actually is how to translate the bee's language, which they use to communicate sources of food and that sort of thing to each other. It's actually, to my knowledge, one of the only language of another animal that we've actually been able to translate. So we can tell almost exactly what one bee is saying to another bee. How about that? People sometimes say to me, you're the bee whisperer, can you talk to the bees? And I actually say, well, I can't, I can't talk to them, but I can listen to them and I can see what they're telling me. And I can tell, I can tell you exactly, I can tell you what they're telling me. And using this dance, you'll be able to do it as well. Will the bees absolutely fascinating. So just to take a step back, this is work done by an Austrian professor, Karl von Frisk, who did a lot of studies using observation hives, glass-sided observation hives, where he could observe the inside of the colony, while he then had helpers going out in the field and putting out various baits of sugar syrup and patiently marking bees as they came to the f f sugar syrup and then observing what those bees did when they returned to the hive and started to convey information from one bee to another. It's an absolutely fascinating uh, study. Uh, basically what a bee will do when it finds a source of food, um, it will come back into the colony and it will dance on the usually the lower brood combs and more often than not it will be on open brood combs rather than capped brood or frames of honey and the reason for that is that those open cells convey vibration much better than capped uh, combs would do and so it uses those open combs as a dance floor and the bee will come in laden with nectar or pollen or water uh, or whatever other materials the bees have found particularly useful. They'll also do this sort of dance in a swarm as well to convey new housing locations. But what the bee will do, it will start dancing on the combs and depending on the distance, the shape of the dance, um, the duration of the dance will vary. The shape of the dance will vary according to direction and the bees will be enthusiastic or less enthusiastic in terms of by eye. Uh, so a vigorous dance will convey a very intense food source. Uh, in other words, very rich in sugar or very, this bee is very excited about it. And, and a slower, less vigorous dance will convey, it's not quite as profitable going here as it would be to others, but this one is still worth conveying to you. And the other thing they'll do is convey what, what the bee is looking for by stopping, periodically stopping and sharing what the bee has found, whether that be pollen or nectar. It'll regurgitate some nectar and share it so the bees get the smell and the taste of what they're looking for. So four things conveyed. Number one, the direction. Number two, the distance. Number three, the um, intensity of the food source. And number four, what that food source smells and tastes like. So us as beekeepers, we can tell three of those four things at any rate. So we can watch a bee dance in the comb and tell, and I can tell you about how far away it is, in what direction it is, and um, whether this bee is enthusiastic, in other words, it is a rich food source or not such a rich food source. Another fascinating thing about this dance or these dances, are that it varies from one race of bee to another. Just like language has certain dialects, the bees have certain dialects, depending on where these particular races were, were raised. So for instance, Italians will have a slightly, some slight variation compared to Carniolans, compared to Germans, and compared to other races. So really is fascinating stuff. I think you'll enjoy this. So I'll draw you some pictures and we'll have a look and I'll teach you to speak B. Okay, first of all, what we have to do is assume we've got a beehive. Let's have a look at a, a beehive here. 
and the bees are going to come in and fly, let's say, from a nectar source out here. And let's picture up here. We've got the sun shining. And our food source might be here. Now, if the distance between here and our beehive here, we've got our bees coming in and out, and they're going off and back and forth to the food source. If the distance is less than 19 feet, the bees will do one type of dance. And, and let's, we're going to take Italians as an example, because as I mentioned, there are several different kinds of dances and it varies from race to race. As most of you will probably have Italians, let's take Italians as the example. So if, if the food source is less than 19 feet away, give or take a foot or so, the bees will do what's called a round dance. So the bees will come in from this flower source and they will go onto the combs. They will find, they will go onto the combs down here. They will find a convenient space to dance and they're gonna start dancing on the comb. And so here's our comb. And we've got lots of uh, hexagonal cells here. I could, I would love to be able to draw this a bit better. But anyway, you've got your comb here and your bee starts going around in a circle. And it's gonna be quickly going around and it's gonna turn around and it's gonna go back again. And it might turn around again and go back again. And this is called the round dance. So the round dance means it's less than 19 feet from the hive to the flower. So they're not giving particular directions, but what they're doing is they're dancing, they're sharing the food. They may be enthusiastic or less enthusiastic, but they say to the bee, just start going around the hive. And you'll find, you'll smell it like this. We're only, it's only 19 feet away, so it's really close to the hive. That's the round dance. Now, there's a second dance called, let's take an example where the flower is considerably further away. Let's say the distance now is in that direction. Let's say that that distance now is greater than 112 feet away. So 19 foot and 112 feet are about those break points. So we're gonna now look at that long distance dance. This is, typical, this is called the waggle dance. And what happens there is that the bee comes onto our comb. I'm not gonna draw that hexagon again, but the bee comes onto the comb and starts waggling her abdomen very rigorously. Waggle, 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 waggle. And she'll run back round again. So she'll be going in this direction. In this one, she's going in that direction. So she's waggling her abdomen and then she'll go waggle, 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 and come back again. And waggle, 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 and come back again. Waggle, 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 come back again. Sometimes called the figure of eight dance, but this is also called the waggle dance or the wagtail dance. And you'll notice here that, remember, these combs are hanging straight up and down. So they're vertical combs. And there is a, if you look at this, this is the vertical axis. And the angle of the waggle dance is going in this direction. And let's say that is 60 degrees. What she's saying is, go to the hive. Here's the sun. The sun is this way. Go 60 degrees to the left. 
and the food source is now dependent on how many how long that waggle lasts. So for every 0 0.9 seconds, that equals half a mile. So if that waggle lasts 1.8 seconds, waggle, 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 and then runs back, waggle, 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 but this waggle from here to here lasts 1.8 seconds, that equals one mile. So she's saying 60 degrees to the left of the sun, go one mile in that direction. And she remembers that she's sharing the food. It smells like this, it tastes like this. Now, depending on how intensely she waggles, intensity signals the profitability of that food source. So she'll say, it's a really good food source if it's a really intense waggle. If it's a less intense waggle, it's less sugary solution, for example. So she can tell you where to go, how far to go, in what direction, what, how far to go there, how good that food source is. Uh, the only thing we can't do is what it smells like as well. But this little dance with critters the si with the brains the size of a pinhead, this is accurate within a few yards. Now you give someone directions to the supermarket and get it accurate within a few yards, you're doing pretty darn well. Well, these little critters with tiny little brains are conveying that information that accurately. Now I said there was a third dance, and that's kind of like a hybrid between the two. Um, let's say it's in the same direction, but the bee comes into the, into the colony and she starts doing a, a dance and she goes round and then comes back. And she goes round and then comes back. And she goes round and then comes back and she goes round and then comes back and this is saying the food is in that direction and this is typically for distances which are more than 19 Let's see if we can see it here i'm going to write it down here just in case we couldn't see it that's greater than 19 feet away but less than 112 feet away. So in other words, the intermediate distances, this is called the sickle dance. So the direction of the sickle dance is, is bisecting these two points. That's the sickle dance. Now, if the bee is looking for food in this direction, that waggle goes this way. So that means the bees have to leave the hive and go in that direction, go this way, all according to the angle here. So there you have it. Now you know how to speak bee. So now you can speak bee. You can go out to the uh, bee yard and you can impress your friends and they're not going to believe you when you tell them, yes, the food, if I look at the bee dancing here, yeah, it's sun is over there, it's over here. And I would say, judging by that's about half a second, it's only about half a mile. Oh, that must be uh, Culkin's farm down the road over that way. So it's, uh, it's actually true. You can actually uh, prove these things to yourself. And also when I...